It is a great pleasure for Paul and I to address you today. We have been asked to give a presentation from either side of the street, or basically the A6, namely the former NIAE and NCAE, with a look back but with an eye to the future. It has caused considerable mirth in the institution headquarters as to which TV shows we represent. Is it Strong Arm and Miller, Little and Large, Hinge and Bracket? But after some thought and taking our lead from Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons, being known as the Jersey Boys, we have gone with the Silso Boys as we try to tell the Silso story. Neither of us quite go back the 80 years of the institution. But together, we exceed some hundred years of institution activity. In this slide, you can see two young men circled in red almost 50 years ago, virtually to the day, with their classmates and the key academics that were our inspiration. The story could cover very many aspects, but time is limiting. And so we apologize to those and the activities that we could not squeeze in. Please bear with us. We hope that the next few slides will help to demonstrate the impact that Silso as a whole and the IA Green members, many of which constituted the activities of the Institute and the College, had and continues to have upon the world. A fledgling Silso had many of its roots from the work of King's College Durham and more latterly Newcastle University. Here you can see a slide of the head of department, Herbie Fale, sitting in the centre at the front. He was supported by both Alan Rees and Peter Payne. Peter, who had just completed his PhD at the NIE, they trained many of their postgraduate students that had an impact on both the Silso establishments and the institution. In the rear row, you can see Martin Nellist and Brian Whitney and John Kilgour. In front of him, Gordon Spohr, with Herbie Fail, the department head, sitting in the centre, supported by Peter Payne and Alan Rees, and Matt Jameson. John and Gordon worked a very long time at the college with Peter Payne, Brian Whitney working in the Scottish centre, uh, and also for a long time president and the editor of Landwoods and Biosystems Engineering. Why am I here? Why am I alongside Dick? Well, I think I'm here primarily because... Uh, at one stage, I was Director of Technology at Silso Research Institute, uh, which was here at Rest Park. How did I get there? Well, I, I left school and went to work on a, a local farm, uh, then realised that um, I did need to get some education, did O-levels and A-levels, which enabled me to go to the National College of Agriculture and Engineering to do a degree. I started in 1967 was allocated to John Kilgour as my personal tutor and spent four very happy years uh, in Silso to start with. During my time at Silso, I worked a little bit for ADAS and when I left uh, NCAE, I worked briefly for the Ford Motor Company in their tractor plant before joining what was then the National Institute of Agriculture Engineering, later to become Silso Research Institute, where I worked on bits of the sugar beet crop under Micah Doherty uh, on grain drying with Martin Nellist and on crop spraying with Brian Legg, Danny Boyce and Ron Bell. And then ultimately uh, took over the role of Director of Technology. Since then I've maintained an interest in spraying uh, through the uh, unit still here at Silsa and we'll say more about that later. I've been involved with the Douglas Bonford Trust and have had many roles within the institution um, and have drawn great satisfaction from that. My foundations were somewhat similar to Paul's. Uh, I was born and raised on the Chiltern Hills in South Oxfordshire uh, on a farm initially uh, and shortly as a young man uh, in my teenage years worked on the farm and in the forestry. I was fortunate enough to uh, do my own A levels uh, in Reading at Alfred Sutton's and moved then in 1965 to the NCAE to undertake an associateship because there was no degree at that time. Um, but during that, those three years of study, uh, degrees were, began to be awarded and we were the first group to uh, have an undergraduate degree in ag engineering in Britain. 
Following those studies at Silso, the Midwest called and I went to Illinois for a couple of years to do a master's degree and to teach uh, in soil and water engineering. I returned to Silso in 1970 to do a PhD uh, program sponsored by Color Gas onto the mechanics of very narrow tines, which we'll hear more of in a moment. And some of my founding work was also done with Brian Finney in ADAS as a vacation student. Uh, and I spent some time in uh, Canada, in Montreal, at MacDonald College. I spent most of my career at uh, NCAE Silso in teaching and research in soil mechanics, soil management, waste management, and more latterly in precision farming. I rose to the rank of professor and had a bunch of academic administrative jobs for uh, the college and the university. In my so-called retirement, I am a visiting professor at Harper Adams University, uh, following on in the soil mechanics and soil management area. And I spent a lot of time working with the institution and still do, and the Douglas Bonford Trust, like Paul. Currently, I have just been elected to the uh, nominating committee for the American Society of Agricultural and Biological Engineers. So we have to have some influence in putting people forward uh, for the next key leadership roles in the society there. You'll see that the next slide shows that Paul and I had interactions right back from 1970 when he had started some work under the sponsorship and the tutelage of Gordon Spore onto the mechanics of very narrow tines, which was very appropriate for me to pick up for the work for Calagas, who wanted to inject anhydrous ammonia into grassland and wanted to do that with causing little soil damage. You can see on the right hand side some data Gordon and I presented in one of our papers from work that Paul had done in his bachelor's thesis. That work on tillage followed very much the work that had been initiated by Peter Payne when he did his PhD at the NIAE and in fact Peter Payne's seminal work uh, was written and presented in the Journal of Agricultural Engineering, Volume 1, Number 1, in 1956, and uh, is really a stalwart paper in the history of that journal and in soil mechanics. Paul and I continued to work side by side in the two institutions right the way through our careers. You can see in the next slide uh, that in the era of precision farming uh, in the early noughties, uh, 2003, this particular one, we published a paper which is cited very widely uh, around the world uh, on the key technologies for mapping within field variability, which is an essential requirement for the basis of precision farming. And this was in a special edition, uh, I think there was about 11 papers in there, uh, that was edited by Brian Whitney, who at the time was the key man in biosystems engineering.